Welcome back to this week's training vlog, or rather this week's training update. Not so much a vlog because there's not a whole lot of training to see. So a couple of you might have seen my Rebuilding Moiler review where I went through the practical screening process to address what my knee pain was. Long story short, it looks like it's an issue with right side external rotation and a little bit of left side external rotation and then right side ankle mobility compared to my left side. So both sides actually passed kind of minimum standard you'd need for ankle mobility, which is no surprise. But the right side was significantly tighter and in the external rotation, the right side was significantly less than my left side so the rebuilding process for that is kind of what i've been doing for the last week so in terms of weightlifting what have i done basically i've done two sessions where i snatch and clean and jerked uh like 120 in both of those sessions very very light very low volume i've taken three full days off which is something i do not enjoy doing so well not full days off i still have done my morning rehab and morning obligation work so when something like this happens with the mobility being the source of my pain, what you end up with is, for in my case anyway, I saw a huge reduction in pain immediately, so a big reduction in pain, and I felt a freedom of movement in both my knees, which was incredibly reassuring when it happened. However, obviously, because I've been moving with dysfunction, essentially, for a significant period of time with heavy weights fairly frequently, I've obviously irritated the tendons and ligaments, so I need to reduce the loads and intensity and training frequency on these until that pain goes away. So I contacted Aaron and I just said, you know, Aaron, how long would you expect to see this residual information stay? And he said between a week and a two weeks, if you reduce the pain on them and you don't reintroduce pain and you have a solid rebuilding process for your plan. So I feel like I've done both of those pretty well. So I think tomorrow will be day seven. So it'll be a full week and potentially another week after that before I see a huge reduction in pain. So it was very reassuring that I saw a big reduction immediately and now I in the last few days i feel like the pain has been constant and a little bit less one mistake i did make and which is probably something i would like to make you aware of just in case you're going through the same issue is if you have injuries like this you shouldn't actually unload a tendon completely if you go from a lot of training uh down to basically going from here down to here so so my issue i did make was i should have been doing maybe two three times a day was about two to three sets of 20 rep body weight squats to pain-free depth which for me is technically is, is a full range of motion squat just keep your knees kind of lubricated essentially and keep some load on the tendons so what's happened i noticed by like friday my tendons did kind of tense up a little bit and i have a little bit of pain in my knees but it feels like a tightness pain rather than the old pain i was having which is probably a good thing uh today i reintroduced the those bodyweight squats to address that in terms of anything significant in training i've basically done i've actually done no squat which is not something i'm too particularly disturbed about given that the 260 moved quite well last weekend and I probably could have done 270 if my knee hadn't uh, gone catatonic essentially so it's no harm to take a little bit of break from squats for a week or two even given that I'm quite happy where that is however one thing I was able to do was the 260 deadlift on Friday beltless and no shoes which moved very well so you you'll have heard me mention in previous training vlogs where I was talking about the clean deadlifts really helped my clean however obviously I couldn't do clean deadlifts for basically the last five weeks because of my hamstring the hamstring seems to address itself given the work I put into it. However, now it looks like because the right hand side where the hamstring issue was lacked a lot of external rotation is very, 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 very likely that they were related. So the 260 moved well and I'm hoping I can keep my clean deadlifts up and maybe push it to new PB, so an actual all-time PB by the end of this training block whenever I'm able to get going again. Uh, in the meantime, I'll keep doing clean deadlifts because they don't disturb my knees or my hamstrings, which is at least some kind of solace for me the realistically the outlook for the next week at least is still a big reduction in training volume and intensity and i'll reintroduce a little bit more frequency given to see how my knees are progressing i will keep addressing the external rotation and the rehab exercises i need to do psychologically for this kind of thing right so at the end of a training block i'm pretty content i'm very happy for a couple of weeks to take some downtime train less frequency less intensity psychologically and actual in terms of load however if I have to take four days off for reasons of life interfering or injuries like this, I fucking hate it. Like, I'm quite neurotic about my training if you haven't got that for my training vlogs. Uh, I've gotten better as the years get on with experience. However, still obsessed with training, of course. So in terms like this, some days for me, the thought of taking that day off when I wake up in the morning and not being able to train in the evening is not something I'm great dealing with. But as the day goes on, I've obviously a lot of stuff I need to do. I... You know, it's not for want of things to do, but for things I want to do is training. So mid training block, I feel like I haven't earned the rest days, you know, and then I feel like I feel like I haven't put in the work to get the time off. So for me, I feel like um, I'm not putting in the work to train, even though I know I have to do this. 
this is the most important thing for my progress is to take off a little bit of that volume and intensity and let the pain clear up. Knowing that and psychologically accepting that are two different things. So it's for me, it's a little bit annoying, but obviously get the fuck on with it. Hopefully it will address knee pain and it will be for the greater good. But so between now and then, so tonight I might do a little bit of light front squats to load my tendon a little bit, maybe like literally 100 kilos or back squats, depending on how my knee feels after I do some satch clean jerk. So ideally, realistically in this scenario, I probably shouldn't be doing any satch clean jerk, but my neuroticism can only drop so far before I will not do something. Fitz has talked to me about this and I said, look, I can accept a lot of things, but this is one thing I know. I'm, I'm aware that this is not the best scenario, but this is not something I want to do for me. Not doing the snatch and clean and jerk is far worse than, for example, not squatting, essentially. Retaining memory of the movement and the feeling of it in weightlifting, as all of you will have know, is something that goes very fast. And that's something I'm willing to give up, considering how happy I am my technique. Uh, is that for is that the best idea? Maybe not. But listen, I know I'm aware of the issue. And uh, as we always say, if you acknowledge you're being an idiot, then, you know, power on, essentially. So things look more optimistic in terms of this. Interesting that may even raise the hamstring. I'll probably go for a heavier deadlift again at the end of next week if things feel okay. I'm pretty happy. I might hit 270. I'll see how it feels. I'll play training by ear over the next few days. So Aaron did say it'll probably take a week or two before you see a big reduction in pain or you see some good progress. So mentally, it's probably looking at this stage. I can I'll increase the frequency a little bit this coming week and then the week after hopefully i'll be able to start training properly again and then either i'll address if i need to take longer i will probably take even a longer period of downtime depending on how things pan out so what i might do is i might go for another two months hard depending on how much time i have to take off from actual hard training over this period of time and how much when I do get back to training, I feel like I've kept. So if I feel like I've kept a lot of it, then I will push hard for two months. However, if I feel like I, I've stepped back enough or not, I might take a little bit longer downtime. I might do a little bit more of a GPP phase and then I might aim for a full 12 to 18 week training block, depending on how things go in the field. So I will play that by ear and then I'll make a plan based on that. As long as I can train hard, I'll be happy and I know that I can get some progress. But we'll see how things go over the next week or two. I'm not committed to anything yet so i just need to see how things evaluate realistically if they get a lot better the next few days i can just jump back into where i was in terms of strength training realistically i, I will step back a little bit and build up again and then the snatch clean jerk i'll have to start putting in a lot more work and volume with those which is something i wasn't able to do basically for the last two and a half months which is was very annoying but there um, them sort of cookie crumbles essentially in weightlifting so remaining stoic or as stoic as possible accepting that this is what happens you know how i react to this is essentially determines what will happen and how it affects me in terms of mentally not training as hard as i would like obviously a lot of people who like training are somewhat psychotic and that is some of the stuff that you have to deal with so i am trying to be a mature athlete and sit this one out but i will continue to try and do that any of you if you don't follow my instagram go follow there because you'll probably see a little bit more updates in between the week and how things are going and you might see a heavier deadlift if not we'll see a little bit of, we'll see next the end of next week we'll tell an awful lot in terms of how fast this is re rehabilitating i'm pretty confident it'll rehabilitate fast if i'm smart about it given that it was just a mobility issue uh the, the tendons and surrounding tissue will just need some time to recuperate which is which much better, for example, than if it was like full-blown tendonitis or tendinopathy, which would take a lot longer to recuperate and involve a lot more rebuilding process. So I'm remaining optimistic, praying that I can start training as hard as possible again and training like an absolute motherfucker. So between now and then, I will remain cautious, keep doing some snatch clean jerks, a little bit of squatting, we'll see, keep hammering my rehab, and hopefully, fingers crossed, they will get better. See you next week. Well, I'll see you tomorrow, but for my training vlog, I'll see you next week.